Good afternoon. Oh, hold on one second. Okay, can everybody hear me? So I'm Jackie and I'm one of the youth librarians here at the Santa Clara City Library. And today we are going to be doing a STEAM lab, uh, which is centered around galaxy science because we're going to be talking a little bit about the uh, James Webb telescope that's going to be launching in December. Uh, so that's a really, really big achievement uh, for the United States because it's going to help us explore more of our galaxy. So that's why we're having some galaxy science. Uh, if you haven't already, please have your materials ready. We are going to be doing three different activities. And let's see, Miss Lorena, could you put the link for the supplies? Let's see here. Thank you so much. Okay, so if you guys click on that link, you'll be able to access the list of supplies that you're going to need for each activity. So I'm going to give, does anybody, is anybody not ready? If you're not ready, go ahead and let me know in the chat. Substitute for baby oil. Essentially, as long as it's an oil-based liquid, that's fine. We we pick baby oil because it's clear so that you'll be able to see um, the different effects that are happening in the bottle. But you can use um, olive oil, any kind of cooking oil if you want. Um, I know canola oil has a lighter hue to it. So yeah, anything that's as close to clear as possible. All right, any other questions on the supplies before we get started on our first one? No, are we all ready then? Any objections to starting? Any substitution for glitter? Um, Unfortunately not, because the glitter will be like, you know, reflecting kind of the light. So it's easiest to see the glitter in the liquid. If you have loose confetti, you might be able to use that. But if you don't have glitter, that's okay. Um, I would just say when we get to that part, uh, we're not gonna, you probably wouldn't wanna use a lot of the color, the food coloring so that you can see what's happening inside. So you'll want to aim for a lighter color. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, if there's any other questions, Miss Lorena can definitely answer or she can let me know that somebody has a question. All right, so I am going to, oops, move on. Oh, let's see. Here, so just to get, just so that you know, for the first activity, it's going to be magic milk. Um, you will need any kind of milk. You can have whole milk, 2% or almond milk, um, dish soap, food coloring, Q-tips, a plate, uh, white watercolor paper, or you can use regular paper if you don't have that. It's not gonna be as effective, but it'll still be cool. So that's going to be for our first activity. But before we get started on that, I just wanted to talk about the James Webb Telescope. So as you can see here, I have two pictures here. The one on the left side is actually conceptual art. So that's what the telescope is going to look like once it's launched into space. And the one on the right side is what um, it actually looks like as they're building it. So all those little yellow pieces that you see, those are, that's what's taking the picture. So it's going to reflect off of those and produce a picture that's going to be sent down to Earth. And it's actually very, very huge. I want to say that maybe scaling to a human, maybe one of those reflectors is, is the size of a human. Okay, so a couple of quick facts. This telescope is named after James E. Webb, and he was NASA's second administrator. 
He was best known for leading the Apollo, which was a series of the lunar ex exploration programs that landed the first humans on the moon. So he did really, really big things for NASA. Um, in addition to that, he also created a space program uh, with 75 launches during his tenure. So he had a lot of successful space launches. The James Webb Telescope is uh, scheduled to launch December 18th, uh, 2021. The total cost to build this telescope is estimated 10 billion US dollars, which is one of the most expensive ones we've ever created. And it's going to weigh 14,000 pounds. So very, very, very heavy. And I didn't, didn't see, I didn't put it in, but this telescope will be launching out of French Guiana, which is a country down in South America. And I've actually been to the, um, the launch site where they launched the, the rockets and the uh, satellites because my husband used to work for uh, Space Systems Morale. So he worked on uh, different, was it satellites that they would launch there? So it's a really, really cool site. Let's see, it will take one month for this telescope to reach its target orbit, which is going to be at the second, let's see, Sun Earth Lorraine point. And that is about 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth. Uh, let's see, it will take a little bit of time for the telescope to start uh, working properly. So once they launch it, they're going to be running tests to make sure everything is good that the system is running as is expected they're going to be taking test pictures and once that's all settled and they're they're sure that everything's working properly the regular space operations will begin to arrive about six months after the launch and the purpose of this telescope is that it's going to explore the end of the dark ages so it's the first light and the reionization uh, the assembly of galaxies the birth of stars and protoplanetary systems, and also planetary systems and the origin of life. So it's gonna be able to take pictures further than we've ever seen. So that we'll, we're, we're gonna be able to really fully understand more about our galaxies and possibly um, discover other galaxies in, in the universe. All right, so really exciting things are gonna be happening. Okay. Um, for our activities, we're also going to be using the scientific method. Who is familiar with the scientific method? If you are familiar with that, raise your hand or you can say you're familiar, you can say yes in the chat. We're going to go over the different steps of the scientific method. Let's see. Oops. Okay. We have some people raising their hands, some people saying yes. All right, awesome, okay. Here we go, so the scientific method, number one, you're gonna ask, you're gonna be asking a question about the experiment you're gonna be doing, right? You wanna find something like, why is the sky blue? Or why does this rock drop so quickly? So that's like a question. Uh, number two is hypothesis. You're gonna be making a guess as to what the outcome is gonna be. Third step is actually to conduct the experiment. And number four is to record your data. So you're gonna see what happens and then write down what you see. Number five is analyze your data. And number six is report back your results. So you're gonna see whether or not you were right with your hypothesis. Okay, so that is the scientific method. All right, so moving on, we are going to go, go ahead and start our first activity, which is magic milk. So I actually need to go grab my milk from the refrigerator. So here is the list again, go ahead and grab those and I will be right back.
Okay, okay everyone. Everyone. Oops. Oh, God, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and we're going to switch over to the magic. I'm sorry, not the magic, the science cam so that you can see everything that we're doing. Go ahead and just spotlight that. Okay. So the first thing we need is we're going to need our plate right here. And we're going to need our milk. So I have some milk right here. We need Q tips. I'll just put like two out. Q tips. Uh, my food coloring, where is it? All right, so I have a package of food coloring here. So I have a whole bunch of different colors. You can just pick whichever ones you like. So I'm gonna do, I'll just pick out orange, um, pink, chartreuse, teal, let's do five colors. You can do whatever you want. And this is like a purple amaranth. Okay. okay, and then we're also going to need, here is my watercolor paper. And I just cut it up into smaller pieces. That was actually a nine by 12. Oh, and I also just wanted to say, um, please make sure that your parents are there or parents or caregivers are there to help you out if you need it. This, these activities can get a little bit messy. So just wanna make sure that they're there to help you. And then just so, let me just grab that. Okay, so I just have some Dawn, just so, okay. So what we're first going to do is we're going to pour some milk into the plate. So you can be using a plate or a bowl. So you just want enough to fill the, the plate or the bowl. I'm gonna keep pouring. Okay, that should be good enough. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a drop of each of the different colors, just like around the bowl here. So, There we go. Oh, that really sank down. <laughs> I might have put a little bit too much milk. I'm going to be able to see it. I'm actually putting about three drops because my plate's so big. Okay, last one. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Q-tip and we're gonna put a little bit of dish soap on the end. So about this much. I'll put some on the other end too because I don't want to contaminate the colors. Okay. There we go. So now we are going to just touch it to the color. Okay. So that caused a huge effect. Let's see if I can reach the other color down there. You guys see that? Is that happening for yours too? I'm gonna to touch each one. There's the green. I can't remember where the orange was. 
Oh, there's orange. Somewhere over here. Okay. Did everybody's have the same effect? Let me check the chat. Okay. So the reason why this happens is because milk contains fat. And generally the food coloring is supposed to float on top of the fat. Um, it kind of sank down underneath. I used whole milk, so that could be why. But as you can see, um, there's still some action happening. Maybe I should add some more. Anyways, you can like swirl it around if you want afterwards. Um, so when you add the dish soap to the fat, the fat, I'm sorry, add it to the milk, the fat separates and it moves the food coloring around. So there's a chemical, there's a reaction that's happening here. Um, and the reason for this is because all liquids have an effect called surface tension. So that means that the molecules on the surface of the liquid, they bead together and they form this uh, dome because of their molecular bonds. So, when the dish soap is poured over the surface, the surface tension is broken and it causes the dish soap, dish, the dish soap to break down the bond and it floods the color forward, all right? And another effect that's at work here is it has to do with the fat molecules of the fat and the soap molecules. So soap is made up of, it has two different sides. It has one side that loves water and another side that loves the fat in the oil. So soap works by grabbing the oils by its hydrophobic side and bonding with the water on its hydrophilic side. So when the soap is washed away with water, it takes the oils and the fats with it. So that's why we use dish soap to clean your dishes and it gets all that fat and the grease off. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna swirl our colors a little bit just gently and create. This is where it's gonna get fun because we're gonna get our paper. And we're gonna make a little design. Don't do it too much because it's already still swirling around. So that looks kind of fun. I think I did add too much, um, too much milk. So that was my, my bad. Okay, so here's where the magic's gonna happen. We are going to take our paper and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it down flat and just kind of press it down and lift it back up, okay? You guys ready? Oh, did you see that? There must have been some extra soap that just touched it. Okay, there we go. So press it down. Lift it up, whoa. You can swirl it. So it's almost like making your own watercolor art. So there's one design. And then what you can do is you can keep these and use them as postcards. So if you have the watercolor paper, it's gonna, it's gonna hold up really well. There's another one. And your designs are always going to be different. Look at this one. Okay. All right, and you can also experiment by putting, if you want to, so there's more action happening here. So if you want to continue, you can grab more just soap and see what else happens with the surface tension. So it's going to continue to react to the dish soap. And then you can definitely create way more, a lot more patterns. It's almost like it's alive. What do you guys think? Is that cool? Are, someone asked, are these acid free? What are you referring to? 
it, like any of these items or the paper? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this away and we're gonna move on to our next activity. Okay. The design is the design acid free. It should be. <laughs> Everything here is non toxic. Okay, I'm going to move these to the side. All right, so we're going to move on to our next activity, which is Galaxy in a Bottle. So let me go ahead and share my screen again and go over the materials. Okay, the next one is Galaxy in a Bottle. So what you're gonna need is a clear plastic bottle. So I have one of these. I don't know if you can see in the cam. The ones that actually work the best are if you use glass um, Voss water bottles. Those work amazing. Uh, we're going to need a large measuring cup. We're going to need water, uh, a spoon or a straw, or you could also use, I have a little stirry stick that I'm going to be using. We're also going to need a glitter. You can have regular or fine. I have both. So I'll show you everything when I spotlight my camera again. So I have two kinds of glitter. You're gonna need food coloring and baby oil, about six ounces. Uh, do, do you guys need a few minutes to grab all that stuff or do you have it ready? See. Oh, your dad was trying to put the dish soap on the Q-tip, but put some on the plate accidentally. So it got messed up. Oh, I'm sorry. You can always try it again. Just get a fresh plate. Um, how much water? We're going to fill about two. You probably need about two cups of water. So I don't know if you can see this in the cam right now, but I have a glass Pyrex. A measuring cup and that'll hold about two cups of water. So I'm going to go ahead and go fill that right now. And then I'll switch over to spotlight my screen again. You don't have glitter, that's okay if you don't have glitter. Just use less food coloring so that you can see the reaction that's happening. So if you see like this, this picture actually doesn't have that much glitter in it, so you can still see. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. Okay, so again, here's the clear plastic bottle. This one's just a hint water bottle. And then we have our measuring cup with about two cups of water. And we have this kind of glitter. I also have fine glitter. So we can, ex I'm gonna do one with each different type of glitter so you can see the difference. So we have regular glitter and fine glitter. We have our mixing stick. We're gonna use, let's see, which color should we use? Let's do teal. Teal and pink maybe? I'm just gonna use two colors. Okay, so we have our food coloring and the last thing we need is our baby oil. 
So baby oil, okay? Or anything that's clear oil will work. The clearer, the better. All right. So if you have your bottle, make sure you rip off all the labeling because you wanna be able to see what's inside. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to fill um, half of the bottle with baby oil. So the bottom half, so about, let's say like right to here, that's how much baby oil. So it's about six ounces worth. And I forgot to go over our scientific method with the first activity, but for this one, what do you think is going to happen once we combine everything together? What is your hypothesis on this? All right. So I'm filling this up. Okay, let's see. Oops. Uh, yeah, that's about, that's about right. Okay. Does anybody have a guess? Okay. That's okay. So we're going to move on. If you, if you don't have, you don't have baby oil either. Um, do you have any kind of oil? Unfortunately, oil is one of the key ingredients to make this successful. So if you don't have that, you can just watch this time. You can always rewatch the video on our YouTube channel and do the activity when you have it again. Okay, so Miles says it's going to mix very well. Who else has a guess? Yeah, you can use cooking oil. One, things will float like space, maybe. One on top of the other. You don't think it would mix very well? All right, we're gonna find out. So next what we're gonna do is go ahead and recap your baby oil and put it to the side. We're gonna take our water and we're gonna make our galaxy colored mixture. So take your food coloring. You can do like purples or blues or greens if you want. We're gonna get trapped in the oil and the colors are going to be trapped in the oil and it will all spread, possibly. Okay, so. You can do about like six to eight drops. And you can do whatever combination of color you want. So this was teal and I think this is a deep pink. I think I'm gonna throw in some orange too, just for fun. Let's see what happens. Okay, go ahead and take your stick and mix your colors around. This might be too dark. I might have to start over because it now just looks completely black. Okay, sorry, let me try this. I'm gonna pour this out and try a different color combination. I hadn't tried this one before, but it's, it's definitely too dark because you can't see anything. Okay, I'm gonna actually go for a blue color. Here we go. 
here's navy blue. Maybe just two drops. I think it's good to experiment because I went, I was following a recipe from someone, but obviously that many drops made it way too dark. So I'm gonna try two drops this time. And mix it all together. That's better. You can still see through it. It is blue. And maybe do one touch of purple. Okay, I'm gonna mix that up. It's still bluish. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is add the glitter to the bottle. So you want to add enough just to kind of cover the surface of the baby oil. And for this, I didn't add it on the list of ingredients or materials, but if you have a funnel, that is very, very helpful. So here I have just like a little silicone funnel, or if you have a spoon, that's also going to be really helpful. Okay, so here is my glitter. So I'm going to do it with the regular glitter first, just put the funnel over. And sprinkle it in. Okay, so if you can see that it's covering the surface of the baby oil. And next we're gonna pour our, pour our mixture in. Okay, so any other guesses as to what's gonna happen? The colors are gonna be trapped in the oil and wall spread. Okay, here we go. And don't pour it all the way to the top. You want to leave a little bit of space. This is the optional part where if you have a hot glue gun, you can put a dab of it around the rim of your cap and then screw it on so that you can keep your bottle for a long time and you won't accidentally drop it and it won't spill. So I don't know if you can see, but the oil is all at the top. So if you said that they're not gonna mix well together, you are absolutely right. Oil and water will never mix together. So go ahead and give it a shake. No matter how hard you shake it, all, do you see the oil is all traveling with the glitter and it's always gonna try to go to the top. It's hard to see it from the side. Okay, so I'm gonna do it again with the fine glitter. Maybe we can see a little bit of different motion. But the science behind this is that yes, oil and water do not mix. So no matter how much you shake your bottle, it's gonna go back to creating two different layers. So if we wait long enough, you're gonna be able to see that it's forming, the water's going back to the bottom and the oil's all going back to the top. So the oil always floats on top and they don't mix because water molecules and oil molecules are different and they do not attract each other. Um, oil is less dense than water. So even if you pour it first, it's gonna float to the surface. Okay. So we'll do it one more time and we'll do it with the fine glitter. No show Let's see. You see how when you swirl it around? So it's almost like having your own little mini galaxy. 
All right, I'm gonna do it one more time with the fine glitter and then we'll move on to our final activity. Okay. So again, we're gonna grab the baby oil. Fill it up. Actually, with this one, I'm going to add one other thing. I read another recipe where you could put hand soap in it to create a little bit of a different effect. So I am going to do that. And oops, I happen to have some clear hand soap right here. So it's just regular soap that you'd use on your hands. I'm actually going to pour a little of that in here as well. Let's see, without making a mess, sort of. Okay. So this is just gonna kind of add to the effect of the bottle with the glitter. Okay, so next we're gonna add the fine glitter. Fine glitter is very, very messy. It is going to get everywhere. So if you have it, just be really careful. I know as soon as I open it up, it's all over my hands. So I'm gonna use a spoon. And this, you actually don't need that much of, not the fine glitter. So I use about a small spoonful. Okay. Let me seal this up first. And we're gonna add our water back in again. I'm gonna add a little bit more water because I've used most of it for the first bottle. And I think I might add a little bit more purple to change up the color. Okay, stir that back up. All right, here we go. This is a slightly different variation. So again, this one has the baby oil and the soap in it with fine glitter. Yeah. Oops, there's soap at the top. Okay. Oh, this actually looks a lot prettier. So I think the soap helps make it, it kind of breaks that, um, you know how oil and water don't mix. So it adds another element to it where it, it looks like it's blending a little bit more. The oil still retaining its shape because of its own molecules, but when you shake it up, oops, the soap, <laughs> but it looks a lot more blended now. All right, so that's, that's another way to make a galaxy bottle. I think this one actually looks a lot nicer. You probably don't need to use as much soap. When I shook it, it created all the soapy bubbles, but those are the two different versions of the galaxy bottle. And you can see this one is totally separated at the top. Okay. I'm going to show my screen again so that you have the ingredients you need for the final activity. Okay, so the final activity is flour craters. You are going to need a large baking pan or a shallow cardboard box, flour, cocoa powder. Um, this is optional if you have a sieve or a sifter, you don't have to, we could just sprinkle it on, that's totally fine. Uh, different uh, size balls, so if you have balls, marbles, or rocks, all of those will work. And then optional is if you want to measure 
with a ruler and a meter stick, okay? So go ahead and get those supplies ready. I'm just gonna wash my hands and I will be right back. And if you don't have cocoa powder, you can use uh, any kind of powdered spice. So if you have a cumin or chili powder or cinnamon, that's all gonna work. You basically just want something that's gonna be a different color than the flour. Okay, are we all ready to move on to the third one? Raise your hand if you're ready. Okay, I see a bunch of hands up. One minute, okay, we can wait for one minute. No problem. Has anybody gone to see the Eternals movie yet? The new Marvel movie? I know a couple of friends and coworkers who have seen it and I definitely wanna watch it myself. Yeah, it looks like some of you want to see it too. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. We're going to go back to the science cam. All right, first thing you're going to need is a large pan. So you can use, this is just like a plastic storage pan. You can use this. You can use a cardboard box if you have it. So something like this or if you have a baking, a glass baking casserole dish, that's also gonna work. Okay, so that's that. We are going to need cocoa powder. So here's some cocoa powder. We need our flour. Where did I put it? There we go. Flour. We're going to need rocks or what not of different shapes so what i have here i have a a heavier rock and then i also have a ping pong ball so this one's very light then i have a couple of beads so one's obviously heavier than the other and then i also have two smaller rocks so more like pebbles okay so it's just good to have options and let's see what else that's mostly it all right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take our flour and we're gonna pour it into our pan. This is where it can get messy. And just kind of I think I'm going to add just a little bit more flour. So you don't have to do too much. It's probably maybe 
two to three cups worth of flour. We just want to create a nice even surface in the pan. Oh dear. Okay. Okay, about that much. And just shake it around. Okay, next thing, we are going to add our cocoa powder. So you wanna, if you have a sifter, that's great. Then you can make a nice light dusting all the way across. I don't have that. I'm just gonna sprinkle it. Let's see. I'm just kind of try to sprinkle it evenly over the surface and get it all covered. So it's almost like we're making our own little Mars surface. And if you're using a kitchen spice or cooking spice, don't, try not to inhale while you're uh, spreading it out. Okay, we want to try to cover up the flour as much as possible. Make a nice ground. Almost there. Okay. So once we have that down, we have our lovely assortment of rocks and whatnot. So here's where we're gonna make have our question. What's gonna happen when we drop these into our flour mixture here? What do you think is going to happen? And what's going to happen if we do something heavy versus something light? And then you can also think about what's going to happen if we throw it or drop it straight down or if we throw it from the side. Okay, so someone said it's gonna make a crater in the flower. It's going to make a dent. Yep, these are both correct. We are definitely going to make some shapes in here. All right, are we ready? Let's try, let's try this itty bitty little rock first. This teeny tiny little rock, are you ready? Okay, I'm just gonna drop it from up here from the camera. Here we go. Okay, so it went straight down and it made a super tiny little crater. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next size rock. I'm also just gonna drop it straight down. I'm gonna do it over here on this side. Ready? Okay, so that one also went straight down and it also created kind of a similar crater to this one. So they're similar in size and a little similar in shape. And because the same angle that I dropped it from, it basically made the same shape right here. So there's not too much spread. Let's try. Okay, here's this one. This is the next size up rock. And this one, I'm gonna kind of come at an angle this way and we're gonna see what happens. Or what do you think is gonna happen if I come at an angle? I think it might make a different design. So this one was fair, these two are fairly neat in its shape. This one, I'm gonna come at an angle. Oh, okay. So as you can see, it entered this way and it kind of made an explosion this way, right? So 
the way the rocks hit the surface make a big uh, difference on the type of impact it's going to make, especially on a, um, a lunar surface. All right, let's try. Let's try this one. So this one is perfectly round. I'm going to throw it into. Okay, that one made a bigger shape. So because it was round, it kind of it came in from this side and rolled up a little bit. So do you see the shape? It's different from the others. I'm going to try the next size up. Should I drop it straight down to see what happens or should I drop it from an angle again? Not sure if I can get closer to. Drop it straight down. Okay, let's see what happens when I drop it straight down. I'm gonna move this. Ready? Okay. So it kept the circular shape, but it did explode out kind of evenly all around. So I made this kind of little design right here. The next thing we're gonna do is the tennis ball, or not tennis ball, ping pong ball. So this one's ultra light. And it's probably the lightest, let me see. It's about the same weight as these tiny rocks but there's not a lot, oops, <laughs> pretend you didn't see that. There's not a lot going on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it straight down here and then also from the side to see what kind of design it makes. So I'm gonna drop it straight down over here, ready? Oh, so look, the impact from this ping pong ball wasn't that much. So it actually didn't, push out all of the cocoa powder and it didn't quite get to the flower surface. It just kind of landed on top and spread it out a little bit. It still made a crater, but it didn't get through that cocoa surface to get to the flower. Now I'm gonna try to throw it at an angle and we'll see what happens. Okay, so at an angle, it made a bigger mess, but again, it didn't hit hard enough to just break through the cocoa but it did make a much larger crater. All right, our final one is this giant rock. And to be honest, I'm a little scared about the mess it's gonna make, but here we go. I'm just gonna drop it straight down, okay? One, two, three. And of course, the biggest crater of all with the biggest explosion. So as you can see, weight is a huge factor, also shape of the object. And you can always try this again at home if you want with different objects. You can try heavier items, lighter items. All right, so the science behind this is that, uh, let's see here, um, larger objects, uh, that are faster moving and have more kinetic energy than smaller moving objects. So the more kinetic energy, the bigger the explosion. Uh, this energy is gonna be transferred to the flower and the cocoa powder when the object hits the ground. So it's gonna cause it to fly outward, creating the crater, uh, creating the crater and also creating a huge mess. So you will see that the impact kind of churned up the soil server, pretending that this is a planet surface. The soil is the flower, which brings it up. All right, so that concludes our third activity. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. Let me go ahead and just stop that. Okay, so I hope you guys had a lot of fun doing those three activities. Again, this is recorded on YouTube. So if you want to rewatch re the video and go through the activities again, you certainly can. Um, let's see, Ms. Serena, did you put the link to YouTube? Yeah. Okay, Ms. Serena is going to put the link to the YouTube uh, video if you want to rewatch. 
So thank you guys for joining me. Uh, look forward to the James Webb Telescope launch in December, December 18th. It's gonna be making a lot of news and history and it's gonna change the way we uh, explore the world and the galaxy. All right, thank you everyone for coming. Again, I'm Miss Jackie from Santa Clara City Library. Have a great afternoon. Bye.